Alright, so here we go. The first thing I did was uh, I upgraded these Sidewinders. Well, not upgraded, but programmed them. They already had the latest firmware in them. Um, I just plugged them in my computer with uh, Castle Link and uh, I programmed them to crawler setup, which is basically really like uh, full on drag break, um, brushed mode. Uh, I set the lipo cut off, the, the full 100% reverse, uh, a few settings like that. So the first thing I'm going to do with these is uh, take off the plastic that comes on them because I've got to take out the, I want to take out the switch. I'm just going to solder it, bridge the connections on the board. Uh, and I also want to put the two speed controls together as close as possible and I'm going to reheat shrink them back together so that it's basically one unit when I'm done. Uh, I'm just going to run the wires, the power and ground wires from one over to the other and then off. Uh, so that there is it's essentially one unit by the time I'm done I should have I guess I should have mentioned earlier um, the first thing you're going to want to do with these things is program them uh, make sure that they'll program if they program then that means they'll work um, the second thing you're going to want to do is throw away the warranty card because I'm pretty sure what we're doing here is going to avoid the warranty uh, so don't expect any support from Castle. I know I don't. If I screw it up, that's my problem, and I'm going to have to uh, put out for a new one. So what I'm going to do here, basically, I don't know if you can see that, but there's the three wires for the brushless setup. What I'm going to do is desolder the uh, white one, uh, just melt the solder on the back side, pull it out so that it's gone entirely. It's totally unnecessary in a brushed application. Second thing I'm going to do is you can't really see that, it won't focus. Uh, I'm going to uh, take the the switch and I'm just going to bridge the two connections that are on the board. Just put a little piece of solder on there and just solder those together so that they'll they'll bridge and uh, I don't have to worry about the switch anymore either because all I really care about is you plug it in and it's on so I really don't need the switch for anything. Um, and additionally what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull the uh, power and ground wire out of this one and I'm going to run the, a solid wire from the other one to this one and just strip a portion of the wire off to bridge it onto these and then out the back and then that will go to my battery. Uh, I may also uh, set up my BEC in here. I don't have the BEC yet, so I don't think I'm going to do it that way. I'll just put the BEC on the uh, the Dean's connector when I do that end at the when I'm pretty much done the truck. Um, but so yeah, so those are the first steps. It really sucks soldering on these boards because they put some sort of plastic coating on it, and uh, you got to melt through that, and it is a pain in the butt. It's well worth it in the end, though, to have such a small light footprint to work with for your speed controls. Okay, so I've got the first speed control done. As you can see, I removed the white wire, just desoldered it there. I removed the negative and the, the positive and the negative wires, and I removed the power switch. Yeah, you're not gonna be able to see that; it won't focus. Uh, I'm just using a steel camera, a Canon G12, so it doesn't focus on on close stuff very well. But I removed the power switch wires and uh, just put a a bunch of solder on there, well not a bunch, a drip of solder on there to bridge the two. So there's the power switch going in the garbage, the white wire, don't need that either. The ground and power wire, don't need those anymore. Now on to the second speed control.
And that's it for the second speed controller. Did the same thing. Remove the white wire. Remove the switch. I just bridged the two connectors for the switch so it's constant power on. And remove the positive and negative wires. Now I'm going to grab some wire and put it all back together. So I was looking at these speed controls trying to decide uh, what the best way to pair them together is. You could put them upside down on top of each other. That would make it a pretty small footprint. It would allow the, the wires to come out, the motor wires to come out either end. Um, the only thing with that is, that I don't like is it doesn't allow the positive and negative to line up. You'd have to cross them across because they would be different on both sides. So I think I'm going to go this way and basically just lay one right on top of the other with the capacitors offset so that uh, they don't so it gives me a little bit more room um, as you can see that the connectors will all the boards and stuff are going to be touching in there I'll probably just throw a piece of servo tape between them just as an insulator more than anything else and uh, so right now I'm just going to start by soldering the wires onto the bottom of the top board I guess you would call it and then run them through to the bottom of the bottom board and uh, that should be our power wires. I've just got some standard 12 gauge, 16 gauge uh, wire. It's wet noodle, high strand count, really flexible. Uh, it'll allow you to carry a lot of current or sufficient current for our needs anyways. So I'm going to go ahead and do that and see how it turns out. Alright, so the first step of the uh, sticking the speed controls together is done. Um, I soldered them to the, the leads to the top of the bottom board. I fed them through the stock holes and uh, that's a lot easier said than done. It was quite the adventure to try and thread the needle. So uh, now I'm just going to pull these wires through further. I'm going to put a piece of servo tape in between the boards so that they don't touch any of the contacts and I'm just going to sit them on top of each other just like that and wrap these wires back. I'm only going to strip a portion of this wire right here so that I can uh, solder it to that board and then the additional wire will run out the end and that will go to my battery and same with the positive I'll just strip a portion there and then that will run out and then I'm going to shrink the entire heat shrink the entire setup and uh, then test it I guess hopefully it works alright so there we have it I just stripped off a section of insulation from the, the wires and put them onto the corresponding uh, solder spots uh, they're not stuck together very well the speed controls I'm gonna throw a wrap of electrical tape around them just to hold them together better I did throw some some uh, servo tape in there just to insulate it but I'm not to, that should be sufficient for that but it's not holding them together very well so I'm gonna throw some electrical tape a wrap or two of electrical tape around it before I heat shrink it just to hold them together nice and tight So here's the heat shrink tube before. It's uh, 25 mil. I bought it from Hobby King. It's dirt cheap. Like you get a meter for maybe a buck. I'm not sure how much it is, uh, but it's really, really cheap. If you just buy a meter, it'll last you your lifetime. So all I'm gonna do is put all the wires through here and go right over top of both speed controls. And the the piece I cut's a little bit long. I think I'm gonna trim it down a little bit. Uh, but it'll just shrink and it'll suck in on the ends, you'll see.
And there we go, two Castle Sidewinder Micros. Uh, both in brushed mode, with only the brushed leads hanging out. Uh, shrunk together. Much smaller, much lighter than two full ones. The scale says, I didn't weigh the other ones before, which I should have done. Um, I'll try and find the weights and post it in the description maybe. Uh, but this is showing 33 grams total for the two speed controls including the wires. The signal wires will be trimmed down. Uh, the motor wires potentially will be because the it will be mounted on the front axle behind the motor on a Rowdy Racing electronics plate. Uh, so the one will be shortened, the other one will be going to the rear and the battery wires will likely be shortened as well. Um, so it may reduce it by another gram. Not that it's really that significant. It's showing 34 now. Uh, but yeah, that's how you shrink your two speed controls together. I've done this with the Mamba Micro Pros as well. They make a significantly larger footprint because they've got a heat sink which you have to mesh together. But it's essentially the same process. Uh, and Hopefully this works out well for me. I'll keep you posted on updates of the new build as stuff comes in and I have the ability to work on it.